Hey guys, so I'm doing another video on Luke 13, 3. It said, ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Those are Jesus' words, and these words are some of the most misused words in the Bible with these false prophets and counterfeit churches today who use this to teach a false gospel of condemnation and fear that you must turn from your sins in order to be forgiven of sins. Well, like I say in all my videos and on this channel, teach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ his good news that you turn to him for forgiveness, not from your sins. You place your faith in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal, not placing your faith in your obedience to God or your pious works and religious deeds. Those don't lead to eternal life. Only what Christ did in being a child of God through faith in him does the forgiveness of sins and life eternal come about. So I want to go back and read Luke 13. And in context, I'll read verses one through five and then the parable of the fig tree right after that, which will lead into more discussion uh, about this. But I want to show some other um, insights about this passage so that you can get a more complete understanding of the words of Jesus, uh, who was speaking to, what he was talking about, and how we can apply it to our lives today as the church, as Christians. So let's look at Luke 13. We'll start at verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you not, or I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Are those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them? Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So this phrase, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, as I showed in a, at least one Bible perversion, these modern translations, I think it was the New Living Testament, they will add of your sins to this and completely corrupt the words of Jesus, what he was talking about. And then the false prophets who trust in themselves that they are righteous and despise other that teach a false gospel of condemnation and fear and not the gospel of peace not the gospel of grace will use this verse to teach their false gospel that you must repent of your sins in order to be forgiven of sins like i said many times you don't repent of your sins to be forgiven of sins you repent to jesus you turn to jesus for forgiveness who died for our sins and so, you know, Jesus is speaking to a group of people here, as I discussed in the last video on this. And these people were looking at others within the Jewish nation, in the city of Galilee, in the town of Galilee, who had died under the hand of Pontius Pilate. And another group of people who died in a tower that collapsed in the town of Siloam. And Jesus is saying, do you, do you think they perished because they were chief of sinners? Um, no, unless you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So when he was talking to the Jews, what was he telling them to turn from? And what was he telling them to turn to? so that they wouldn't perish. And is he talking about eternal salvation and damnation here? Or is he talking about things temporal? Is he talking to individuals? Or is he talking to a group of people? And so, you know, as I mentioned last time in the other videos, Jesus is speaking to a group of people. And he is comparing what has happened in the past with what will happen to them, the children of Israel, the Jewish nation, the 
children of Israel who were given the oracles of God, but over time, despite God sending them prophets to keep them straight and follow the straight gate and the narrow way of teaching the good news of Christ, they, because of false prophets um, and trusting in their works and through idolatry and being corrupted by other nations and false gods, they lost their way. And they weren't being a light bearer for the good news of Christ. They weren't going out and spreading the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings to all nations. And the prophets, as I mentioned in the past, would come to the Jewish nation, come to the children of Israel, telling them to right their ways or bad things would happen to them. And we see that the kingdom was split. Then the Assyrians um, captured the northern kingdom of Israel. Then the southern kingdom of Judah, Judah was captured uh, and taken into captivity by the Babylonians. At this point in time, the kingdom of Judah is now the province of Judea under Roman rule. And this is getting to the end of the time they have left to turn from their evil ways, teaching false gospels, trusting in their made man-made religion that they had developed, um, using scriptures, um, and resting the scriptures to teach um, false doctrine. And they couldn't see um, Christ within the scriptures um, through the law of Moses, through the prophets, through the Psalms. And when the Christ was manifest and presented to the children of Israel, his brethren, they received him not. Uh, because of a hardened heart and a heart of unbelief. And so Jesus is telling them if they don't change their mind and unharden their heart and circumcise their hearts and not their flesh, that the light would be taken from them. And the kingdom that God had built up on earth for them to be a light for him would be taken away from them and that their physical nation would perish. And we see several times in the Old Testament, like I said, you know, the parable of the fig tree. I mean, there's no, there's no, our, our prophets like uh, Jeremiah and um, Amos and Joel and all these prophets, you know, talking about the fig tree that it would wither, it would perish. You know, they're, they're using that analogy of the fig tree as the children of Israel, um, their physical nation that they weren't bearing fruit by sharing the good news of Christ to come. Therefore, the prophets were telling them, if you don't change your ways and go out and teach the gospel and be a light bearer to the nations, that your fig tree will wither, it will die, it will perish. And it's no coincidence that Jesus uses that analogy right after speaking to this group of people. Um, after he says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You know, in verses six through nine, Jesus speaks this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it 
the ground. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And so that's what happened. Ultimately, the physical nation of Israel, their, the fig tree was cut down. And, you know, the prophets in the past that were sent to the children of Israel, they weren't the, the only ones that were telling, you know, the, the leaders of the Jewish nation um, to get right and tell the glad tidings uh, to their people uh, so that they could go and tell others. You know, this was happening right here at the end when uh, Jesus' ministry um, was um, was taken to his brethren. Um, you know, he told many parables. Uh, you know, the parable of the unforgiving servant, the parable of the unrighteous steward, uh, the parable of the watching servants. You know, these are all directed to the children of Israel. Um, obviously, there are many layers in Jesus' parables that have applications for our lives as Christians today. But at that time in first century AD, that's what he was speaking to. That was the, that was the most superficial layer of that parable for those people at that time. Um, and the parable of the husbandman is another parable that Jesus gave that is parallel parables to the ones that I just mentioned. And it is in line with what Jesus is speaking in Luke 13 at the beginning, where he tells the children of Israel, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So I want to read the parable of the husbandman and show these um, show these parallels. And it's it's given three times in the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to read in Matthew, starting at verse 33. And this is Jesus speaking. Here another parable. There were a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hatched it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. You see the same words, <laughs> you know, likewise, tower, you know, but last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. And Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builder rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. So this is a parable that goes hand in hand with Jesus' words in Luke 13. And, you know, he's speaking to the children of Israel. Ultimately, they didn't turn from their idolatry and um, didn't turn to faith uh, in God um, through Christ. And, you know, as I was mentioning Earlier in the other video, you know, the prophet Jonah, for instance, is a prophecy of ultimately what would occur with the children of Israel um, and the city of Jerusalem, the physical city. It was destroyed in AD 70 um, by Roman army led by Titus. And, 
Jesus is prophesying of all this. Um, the prophets before were pointing to this time event in Matthew 12, 39 through 41. Jesus says, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The Queen of the South shall rise up. In the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold a greater than solomon is here so jesus is speaking of jonah and the prophet jonah being a type of christ he was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights and was resurrected he was dead in the whale's belly and through the power of god was resurrected back to life and then was sent to the city of nineveh and gave the city of nineveh 40 days to turn from their evil ways and seek the true god with all their heart or their city would be destroyed Temporally, it would perish. And this 40 days that Jonah gave the city of Nineveh was a prophecy of the 40 years that Jesus would give Jerusalem and the children of Israel to turn from their evil ways and seek God through Christ turn from their dead works and turn to faith in God in Christ or their physical nation would likewise perish. And it did. They didn't. And it did. Um, you know, again, the Roman army destroyed the city of Jerusalem in AD 70 and the temple. Uh, and many, many people perished. Just like some of the Galileans did during Jesus' time at the hand of Pilate, many Jewish people died at the hand of Titus. Just like many people perished in the Tower of Siloam, 18, there were many people that perished in the collapse and fall of Jerusalem. And not only in the prophets that are speaking of the fig tree that perished in the Old Testament, um, you know, the parable of the husbandman where Jesus is showing in the past that, you know, God has sent prophets to them, to the children of Israel, um, you know, and they rejected them over and over. And finally, God sent his son and, you know, prophesying that they would condemn Jesus to death uh, and say, crucify him, crucify him. You know, all this is fulfilling a prophecy. You know, we see in Psalm 89, you know, I talked about Psalm 89 the other day, one of my favorite psalms. <laughs> I bought the um, 1611 KJV First Edition leaf of Psalm 89, um, you know, but it speaks of God's promises to David and um, his sure mercies to David. But right after that, he, David, prophecies, or Aleph prophecies, of the children of Israel turning their back on the Messiah, not receiving him. In Psalm 89, 35 through 45, 
Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever in his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. But that, but thou hast cast off and abhorred. Thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Speaking of Jesus, thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. He was given a crown of thorns and crucified. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is reproached to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. Selah. So this is a prophecy of the children of Israel not receiving the Messiah. Uh, and ultimately, um, God used the Roman army led by Titus to judge the children of Israel. And the city of Jerusalem was compassed about and destroyed. And Luke 21 you know, where Jesus is, is speaking of prophecy on the Mount of Olives, you know, this has dual prophecy. You know, preterists will look at, you know, the Olivet Discourse and say it only applies to that time of that generation. And then the futurists will look at it and says, no, this is all things to come. But they're both wrong, you know, because this prophecy has near far dualism. Jesus is speaking to that generation of things to come. But he's also speaking from a spiritual standpoint of things to come during the end times. The day of the Lord. But reading in Luke 21, 20, Jesus says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So, Jesus is speaking to this generation at this time. You know, after these multiple warnings that set ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish of the future destruction of their nation, of their physical nation. Now, again, this has end times prophecy connected to it. We'll talk about that just briefly here at the end. But first, you know, like I mentioned in the last video, it's no coincidence that at the end of Luke 13, which, you know, we just covered the first nine verses at the beginning of this video, Jesus says in verses 34 and 35, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather a brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So, you know, again, Luke 13 Three through five, where Jesus tells a group of Jewish people who had just witnessed and were discussing people that had died at the hands of Pilate and um, during a fall of a tower in Siloam, he was using that as an example of the destruction to come of that physical nation if they did not heed the warnings of the prophets with him being the prophet with a capital P and they didn't and those prophecies were fulfilled uh, that we just went into you know they had become an adulterer they were the adulterous sisters you know like 
in Jeremiah, you know, it's talking about the treacherous sister Judah. Uh, Fear not, but went and played the harlot also. Um, speaking of backsliding Israel um, and the treacherous sister Judah, that's what they had become over time. You know, Ezekiel talks about this, about thine elder sister Samaria and the younger sister dwelt at thy right hand is Sodom and her daughters. He's comparing, you know, these prophets in the past, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and others are comparing the children of Israel um, with those nation, heathen nations, you know, in unbelief um, that they were supposed to be going to, to tell the glad tidings of the Christ and the promises of the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But instead, they were corrupted by those nations with false gods and idolatry. Um, You know, they have become an adulterer. They have become one who was married with a harlot. And, you know, like I talked about in the last video, Paul in his epistles was telling the churches, don't get caught up into, you know, into these backsliding ways. Don't get caught up into people privily coming in unawares, teaching a false gospel. Um, You know, don't get caught up with those other nations who place their trust in um, false gods and idols who can't hear or see or, um, you know, and, and so all these, these admonitions that Paul was speaking to the churches that these false prophets again will use um, to falsely teach um, the gospel of condemnation and fear, which is not good news, which is terrible news, um, because there's no saving grace within it. Um, and, um, you know, they, they scoff at the sufficiency of Christ and, and his wondrous work, um, his finished redemptive work on the cross and use the verses accordingly to, um, to prop themselves up that they're righteous. They despise others. Um, you know, they, they destroy widows' houses and uh, the fatherless, uh, those without a husband, um, those without a father who need the word of God, you know, from a spiritual standpoint. Um, so that Heavenly Father, through Christ, um, that they can become in Christ, but they don't tell them the good news. Um, you know, that's what Paul is warning those churches, and that's what today the church has become. Overall, we're in end times apostasy, and the church is the great harlot. <laughs> you know, it's the Babylon. It's the Babylon that's being spoke of in Revelation that's going to be judged, um, you know, with the, you know, within Christianity. All these churches that use the name of the Lord, um, but teach a false gospel and use it in vain and lead others astray and, and trust in their works, you know, obviously led by the Catholic Church, which has more influence on people than any other false um, religion within Christianity that uses the name of the Lord in vain. You know, um, that's what we're looking at nowadays and you know they have become a treacherous sister um and the other sister is all the churches that come out of them you know the protestant churches um they become no better now through uh a perversion of the gospel um people coming in unawares within um different churches and denominations um and spreading through um, modern day Bible translations, these false gospels, getting within um, seminaries, teaching young preachers um, a false gospel so that they can go on and pass it to others within their counterfeit church. You know, this is a time of apostasy and, you know, the treacherous sisters, um, 
you know, back then it was Samaria and Judah. Today it's, you know, the Catholic Church and all the Protestant churches that come out of it. Um, and all the counterfeit churches within Christianity. Um, you can't go to a church and hear the true gospel anymore, hardly. Um, and that shows that we are in these end times. You know, we will be judged, uh, just like the children of Israel. Um, they were given the prophets. And then finally, there was a time where they weren't given any more um, prophets. There were no more signs until the Messiah came and they received him. Not the same thing now, you know. Uh, it was like 430 years from the time of the last prophet until Christ came. You know, we have through a lot of um, great Bible believing uh, men several centuries ago, preservation of the word of God for today. And we see it through the King James Bible, which was written in uh, first edition, which I just mentioned in 1611. We're getting to that 430 years um, from that, you know, can we see, uh, will we see a future judgment? Um, you know, are we in this time of apostasy, a time of the silence before um, we have the two witnesses that come? You know, just like John the Baptist uh, came and was a voice in the wilderness for the Messiah to come. And then we had the faithful and true witness that came. God manifest in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Two witnesses for the one true God, our Heavenly Father. You know, are we going to be seeing at some point two witnesses come about at the time of the Antichrist? Um during the end of these end times, uh, where I think that there's going to be true signs and miracles um, from both kingdoms, you know, from both spiritual kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom uh, from beneath, um, you know, and just like Jesus was telling them to, you know, to not be that unrighteous steward, um, that um, unwatchful servant, you know, we need to follow those words today and those admonitions closely as a church you know um that's how all these parables apply to us today as christians um you know so in revelation 18 where it says in verse 4 and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partake of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and god hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled fill to her double how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. This is in time speaking of the adulterous church. And we see foreshadowing through the destruction of Jerusalem and the physical nation of Israel. Uh, we see in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Luke 21, these dual prophecies where Jesus was speaking to the physical nature, uh, nation of Israel, that generation for that time, but also he's speaking of us in these end times. Um, so looking at all this together, hopefully you'll, you'll watch the other video also either before or after put all this together. Um, and hopefully it will really help, um, you in your understanding of Jesus' words in Luke 13 and passages such as these. Um, I'll talk to you soon. God bless.